Assalamu alaikum guys and welcome to A Smile to Jannah That's why I don't sing Douche Smile to Jannah <laughs> Self-compassion No, it's not the haram kind that you dirty people are thinking of yeah, you're, watching, guy. You're, you're somebody that you're must dirty. be watching you're pornography dirty. This is when we hold ourselves up to ne impossible standards and then we become angry when we fall short of them and then we start cussing ourselves and resorting to self-criticism because we haven't been able to meet those really high expectations that we set ourselves. Oh. Then we start telling ourselves we're not good enough and then we start feeling inadequate mate. Now when we're young of course we look for the approval of our teachers, our parents, our siblings, our PE teacher or whatever and of course when they hit us with some severe criticism and then start calling us names as well Why don't you get back to your work uh, you no good yellow bellied waste of skin Naturally it's a shock to the system mate yeah, because it's not nice when someone starts calling you those things and you want their approval. No! <laughs> and these things cause their disapproval. So what your system then starts doing is you start to preempt it. In other words, you start to criticize yourself before they get a chance to do it because you don't want their disapproval. So that becomes an ongoing radio station in your head anytime something goes wrong Duh, I'm so stupid Duh, I can't get it right Nah, I'm never gonna pass this exam I might as well give up I probably sucked more today than anyone in the history of Kung Fu in the history of China in the history of sucking And not so fast right there we cannot blame everything on the people that have met us in our childhood although they do play a significant part of course we have to also realize that we live in a very individualistic and highly competitive societies mate where it is very important that we come first we obliterate the competition mate yeah five six people going to get a job mate you have to outcompete everybody in that room that's nature compete or die so naturally we start viewing each other as competition, competitors mate there to take the money off our table so we don't get to feed our kids. Okay then what's the standard yeah how do you know that you are doing well mate? Well there's two ways of telling. Number one by comparing yourself to other people and number two you look at the standards set by society which may be to do with a certain amount of money that you need to have. Ching -ching! maybe a house or car or good looks so in other words your self-worth depends on other people but you also have to realize that there will always be somebody more richer than you more good looking than you more smarter than you more stronger than you more intelligent than you I don't know if I could ever be good enough I mean I'm not like the five I've got no claws no wings no venom so the question now arises when do you truly feel like you have won? Do you get to win? Do you get to be first? No, because that standard is the wrong standard to be comparing yourself with. Now I know some people like me are out there and saying you know what stuff like this yeah cussing myself being harsh on myself it motivates me and it's got me through a lot of tight spots and that, that may be the case yeah I'm not gonna lie but the thing is at what expense yeah what is the side effect and the side effect is fear you're instilling fear within yourself oh I'm afraid <laughs> hold me Will <laughs> you're gonna go on stage that fear at that moment in time can cripple you that's where you get anxious anxiety anxiety attacks that's why people can't perform sometimes in examinations or oh, when they are about to perform on a stage they get stage fright. <laughs> Alright guys now that we've discussed the problem let's discuss the solution. I'm sure you're aware of the quote that says that our wounds are not of our own making but our healing is. <laughs> now let's just say you're walking down the street 
as you do with your mate and he falls over quite badly. What do you do? Do you fold your arms and say, what are you doing you mug? You always do this, you can't even walk properly you moron. <coughs> no, of course not. What you do is you immediately go down, you're like, mate, are you alright? And you know, you offer him, you know, a few words of comfort. Don't worry, mate, it's gonna be alright. Then you offer them a hug, oh, it's going to be okay, no problem, no problem. But whenever something goes wrong to you, what do you say? Immediately you start saying, oh, I'm so stupid, oh, I can't get that right. If you were to treat others like you treat yourself, you'd have no friends, mate. You'd be Billy No Mates. So my question is, why are you so good to other people, but so harsh with yourself? Because you know you spend the most time with yourself, so you need to have a good relationship with yourself. Whenever something goes wrong, you say, oh, I'm stupid, I'm this, I'm that. How is that productive? It shuts down your brain, shuts down your body, there's no progress. You need to say proactive and productive stuff like, ah, how can I prevent that from happening next time? How can I improve that such that that doesn't happen again? I mean, what is the cause of this, this, this happening again and again? That's productive because you're getting your mind thinking. And going back to the point when something happens to somebody else, you hug them, you speak to them. Why can't you do that to yourself? What are you saying bro? Are you saying I gotta hug myself? Yes, yeah hug yourself. You know what I'm saying? You can't always rely on somebody else. I'm still waiting for that hug from my mommy. Our parents, some of them come from different countries, different mentalities, our siblings sometimes going through stuff on, on, you know, of their own making or whatever. You gotta love yourself sometimes, yeah? The love has to come from yourself. If you can't love yourself, how are you gonna love somebody else? <sighs> so when you hug yourself, Mmm, that's good. What the hell is this? Audu Billah. Your mind releases a hormone called oxytocin, which makes you feel calm, relaxed, and just good. And your body doesn't know it's not supposed to hug itself. Yeah, you still get the feeling of somebody hugging you. To make something special, you just have to believe it's special. And it's yourself, you know how tight to do it, you know where to do the rubbing and stuff like that. Yeah, there's a very good technique as well. It's called the havening technique. Yeah, people that have gone through trauma, you can YouTube it. I'll put the link in the description, Paul McKenna does it. And this is part of the havening technique. Yeah, that you can actually get rid of certain traumas. And also speak to yourself. Words have an impact. Dr. Mesaro Emoto. Yes indeed, Dr. Bruce Lipton. Yes indeed. They give us the lesson that words do have an impact. They can change things. Yeah, just go to somebody and you know, start being rude and you know, swearing and this and that. Uh, it's just an example here. Yeah? Don't start doing that and then tag me and say, look what I done brother. <laughs> no, don't do that. You notice when you start saying these words, the person starts going red, starts sweating. So words do have an impact. You say something nice, the person feels good. Positive hormone is released. It's positive for their whole day. So say good things to yourself early in the morning. I can do this. You are a man. <laughs> and and this is a very important point yeah this is this is ruddy brilliant yeah when you're comforting yourself what you're doing is normally there's two people yeah one person is the one doing the comforting and the other one is being comforted but here you're one person but there's two roles now yeah so something's gone wrong and you're comforting yourself so the reason why this is brilliant is because you are able to separate yourself from whatever the problem is. You are creating a distance within yourself because sometimes when we're angry, all of us is angry. But here you're distancing yourself and you're able to astral project. And what am I doing? That's not right. I'm just projecting onto you. What happened to me 10 minutes ago? I need to leave. I need to go for a walk and relax because that normally relaxes me. They're trying to bait me in. I'm not going to fall for that mate. And the final technique I want to leave you with is whenever you're doing something, understand and realize there are other people that have also gone through this thing. You're not the only one. Just imagine you're about to go on stage and you're really nervous. You're like, oh man, I'm always getting nervous. Oh, everyone's brave. Somebody comes and says, are you getting nervous? <laughs> I, I get nervous all the time. 
you know, half the cast here, they get nervous as well. Suddenly, it's okay. Nothing makes a brother who's feeling down feel better than seeing somebody who's in worse shape. How do you do this? By looking at blogs. Yeah, people that, let's just say you've got a disability in the family. Yeah, there's a blog for that. Let's just say you're going through something. There's a YouTube video for that. There's somebody else that has gone through what you have gone through. In fact, <laughs> Allah has sent a prophet that has definitely gone through something similar to what you've gone through. And this is a really good book that I actually use. It's called Self-Compassion by Kristen Neff. Self-Compassion and actually being there for yourself is so important because many of us rely on relationships and we carry on our burdens and our problems and we then you know project it onto the other person and the relationship and the relationship breaks and there's too much pressure on the other partner yeah you have to understand and realize the partner's not always going to be there they have to go to work they have to go see their parents they have to go here and there so understand and realize you have to be first and foremost there for yourself yeah all right guys until next time assalamu <laughs> alaikum